From up here, the bird's eye view. Charleston's natural beauty is stunning. But what about down there, beneath the streets? Beneath it all is an amazing system that keeps what we see up here from becoming polluted by wastewater from thousands of homes and businesses. It's the complex inner workings of the wastewater collection system. A network of pipes, pumps, and tunnels that carries what goes down your drain to the wastewater treatment plant. The journey starts here. Wastewater travels through your plumbing system until it reaches Charleston Water System's sewer line. Then it flows through the sewer line by gravity to the nearest pump station. Charleston Water System has over 700 miles of sewer lines and 185 pump stations. These stations collect wastewater in neighborhoods and pump it towards the treatment plant. To reach the plant, wastewater flows into vertical shafts throughout the city that drop into a deep tunnel. This tunnel system carries wastewater under the Charleston Harbor and Wapu Cut to the treatment plant. Charleston Water System maintains this wastewater collection system by inspecting and repairing pipes, pump stations, and tunnel shafts. Manholes provide access for removing grease and debris, and for inspecting sewer lines using robotic video cameras, smoke testing, and dye testing. These inspections help identify problems such as tree roots, grease clogs, and cracked pipes. Finding and repairing these problems helps keep stormwater and groundwater from flooding the system during heavy rain and helps control treatment costs. The collection system delivers the wastewater here to the Plum Island Wastewater Treatment Plant on the Charleston Harbor. Built in 1971, this plant treats an average of 20 million gallons of wastewater each day and is monitored 24-7 by operators. First, the wastewater enters a caisson, a 13-story deep collection shaft. Large pumps send the wastewater up to the start of the treatment process, the headworks. Here, rags and debris are removed using a screening process. Then the wastewater flows into basins where grit and sand sink to the bottom and are removed. The next stop is the primary clarifiers, where smaller solids settle to the bottom and fats and oils rise to the top. Both are removed. At this point in the process, primary treatment is complete. Now the wastewater is ready for a secondary treatment, a biological process that takes place in aeration basins. These basins provide an environment for microorganisms to thrive and consume organic materials in the wastewater. Diffusers on the basin floor inject air to provide oxygen for the microorganisms and help mix the wastewater. The millions of microorganisms that perform this natural treatment are called biomass. Operators and laboratory staff monitor this step carefully to make sure the right conditions are maintained for the biomass to do its job. Next, the wastewater enters secondary clarifiers where the biomass settles to the bottom and is removed into a settling tank. Some will be put back into the aeration basins to continue treating the wastewater. The rest goes through a process to remove excess water and the resulting biosolids are hauled to a facility that uses this material to generate electricity. The other solids, the grit and debris removed at the beginning of the treatment process are also dewatered, then hauled to a landfill. Now that the biomass and pollutants have been removed, the water flows into final clarifiers where any remaining small particles settle out. Finally, the water is disinfected with a chlorine solution and the water, now clean, is ready to be released into the Charleston Harbor. Let's take a final look at what it's like from up above. Beautiful, isn't it? The next time you admire this view from above, just remember, so much is happening down below.